Hello and welcome. My name is Devin Knight and I'm here with Aaron Ostrowski. And we want to welcome you to this new series that we're starting on Power BI interview questions. Mm -hmm. And so the goal of this series is really twofold. One, if you're searching for a Power BI job, a way that you can kind of prep on some questions that you may get asked in an interview. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of it is what, Aaron? Uh, if you're interviewing, what do you need to ask people? What should you be concerned about? As if you're hiring people on for Power BI roles, what do you want to know from them? Exactly. So we're going to play this as if I'm interviewing Erin for mm -hmm. a job here. She's kind of dressed for it. She's got her blazer on, ready to <laughs> <Hire> roll. <me. laughs> yeah. Uh, and so we'll do kind of two things here. We'll do a little role playing where Erin mm -hmm. will actually ask, answer the question mm -hmm. as if uh, she was actually interviewing. And then we'll kind of break the fourth wall for a moment here and actually talk about it together and banter back and forth. Yep. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, sounds good. So first question I have for mm -hmm. you is, I work, for, I have, this is a very large company you're interviewing for. We're okay. huge. We have all sorts of data visualization tools throughout mm -hmm. our organization. Mm -hmm. So Power BI exists in our organization. That's okay. what you're interviewing for, obviously. Right, right. Uh, but we also have other ones. We have Tableau. Okay. We have ClickTech, ClickView. We have... Um, all sorts of them. We have uh, all, all anything that you can think of. We're so big that you are can guarantee that there you is likely that it. product here. <laughs> all right. So um, I'm really an advocate for Power BI, but mm -hmm. how will you help me be an advocate for Power BI at this company if you join us so that I can evangelize it and push it throughout the rest of the company? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I'm, I'm glad you asked the yeah. question. All right. So just to start off, I think you listed a lot of great tools, you know, that, that can help with the, the BI process. Yeah. I prefer Power BI because I think it really extends your existing workforce capabilities. Okay. So Power BI is designed to be really easy to use, low to no code. And if, if your users know how to use Excel, if they know business processes, business rules, yeah. then they can get their hands involved from beginning to end in that BI process and drive insights to the table That's great. so much more quickly. And they can do it at a relatively low cost per user. And so that's great. It's scalable. It's cost effective. And it's something that your existing workforce can use across the board. That's a great answer. So let's talk yeah. about it a little bit more here yeah. together. So if you can see here, we built a little slide where we can kind of talk about this. But a couple of things that you mentioned, I think we're, we'll highlight here again, but mm -hmm. it's very end user friendly. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Excel as a tool that if you have that Excel yeah. background, you'll pick up Power BI rather mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you there. Um, another great one that you mentioned as well is the ability to get to insights rather quickly. Absolutely. So it is very simple to be able to go from not even having a connection to your data to mm -hmm. a solution in a short amount of time with Absolutely. Power BI. Absolutely. And I think it beats out a lot of the other tools in that regard when it comes to being mm -hmm. able to go from nothing mm -hmm. to something. Um, you can talk about costs as well. Yep. I don't, I don't want to get into the details of pricing because that can vary per person and per what you're trying to do. Right. But comparing Power BI to other tools, the pricing is considerably lower, mm -hmm. generically mm -hmm. speaking or generally speaking, uh, with Power BI as mm -hmm. opposed to other tools. I think you totally nailed that. And then uh, talk about this one for a moment. This yeah. is I know this is one of your favorite it's topics actually, as well. It is. It is. So it, uh, Power BI being part of this larger suite of tools, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, absolutely. So when you start to leverage and, and use Power BI, you're actually gaining access to a, a power platform. And so yeah. it's kind of a marketing term, right? Power platform. But really what it is, simply put, is three tools. You've got your Power BI. Uh, you've got Microsoft Flow, which is your workforce automation logic, sort of like the, the citizen developer version of Logic Apps, if you're familiar on the enterprise side. And then Power Apps, which allows those line of business rapid development applications. Yeah. And so those all work together beautifully. You can do right back. They can speak to each other. You can combine your analysis with your yeah. interactivity. So I'm a big fan of the whole platform. So I think Power BI is, it has more chops because it has, you know, family, so to speak, that comes to the table. Absolutely. There's a lot yeah. of huge benefits to yeah. being connected in with those other things. Yeah. And I'm finding a lot of people don't aren't aware of those yet. So coming to an interview with that knowledge in mm -hmm. advance is a huge benefit where you, maybe the company is using Power BI, but they're not aware of the other tools. Absolutely. And you can get them started. And that's on the citizen developer side. You know, we're talking about business users, but also on your IT developer side, you start pulling Power BI into it, you're going to get that great Azure extensibility with different services, cognitive yeah. services, AI, machine learning. So it's really both sides of the coin, I think. I like it. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about our next question here. All so right. the next thing I want to know about is, okay, you convinced me of Power BI. Great. Boom. Is that, was that easy? <laughs> I was already in love with it. You convinced awesome. me. Um, but I want to understand as my team start to actually getting it, get into developing Power BI solutions, mm -hmm. what are some of the stages of development? What are some of the things that they're yeah. going to need to be aware of? Uh, mm -hmm. And hopefully, as a Power BI expert that I'm considering mm -hmm. hiring, you already know these and you can kind of talk me through them, right? So yeah, what, tell so me about it, it sounds kind of like you're talking about, like, what are the stages of development in the business intelligence process and yeah. how does play, Power BI 
play into this. So if you don't mind, let's go over to the desktop and yeah. I can really quickly kind of show you, you know, how that process would sort of implement itself. Sure, let's do it. All right. All right, so we're here in the Power BI desktop. Hey, always a great idea in an interview if you can show rather mm -hmm. than just tell about it, great. You could maybe, if you had to, even you could whiteboard this. But Absolutely. we have the luxury of looking at this within the tools. So mm -hmm. talk me through these different stages of development. All right, so welcome to the Power BI desktop. Let's take a look at this upper left corner over here and run through the process. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this Get Data button right here. This is going to launch what I would consider step one in the business intelligence process, and that is data discovery. And so if, well, you know what, spelling is important, discovery. This right? is an interview If you're all. in an interview, <laughs> get your spelling correct. So data discovery in, in this get data button is gonna launch your Power Query editor. And so for Excel users, this is just like Power Query, has that same familiarity. This is where you would apply your transformations, business rules, connect to your various sources. Sure. And it's worth noting that in Power BI, we have a ton of different sources, tons of different connectors. Yeah. And so the second thing, after you do your data discovery, I would draw our attention over here. These two different icons, these buttons over here in the tab, have your data view and your relationship view. And so this is going to lead us into step two in the process which would be your data modeling. And so okay. we would create relationships. Uh, this is where DAX would come into play. So oh. if you're familiar again with sort of Excel, this is that uh, analysis expression language that's gonna allow you to create relationships, measures, and, and really draw out those insights. And then the third piece and a very exciting component of Power BI is right here, this cute little chart icon. And <laughs> this is where we would do our data visualization. So this is where you're thinking of like sort of your typical report building, um, data storytelling, bringing those insights yeah. together and, and really sharing those insights so people can make positive decisions that best impact your bottom line. Makes sense. So that's kind of the three process, data discovery, data modeling, data visualization, all in one tool, all pretty quickly available and all, all included. And I like what you mentioned about this is it really does you kind of generically spoke about it from a BI perspective because mm -hmm. it would apply no matter what BI tool you're likely using. You need to do all these steps. Absolutely, yeah. The process um, is going to be there. And it's it might all be with multiple place. tools if you're having to That's use right. other solutions. But right. with, like you said, with Power BI, they're it all integrated all here in one. And there's yeah. a sort of familiar experience. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so great answer. I loved it. I love that you actually either whiteboarded or actually mm -hmm. drew me through that so I can understand it a little bit better. So now take me through, I guess, within Power BI, there are some different moving pieces and parts to it, yeah. different components to Power BI. Absolutely. Uh, talk me through those. I want to I make sure okay. you have a good understanding of what pieces and parts go in when, with Power BI. Here. Yeah, sort of what's the structure? What is it made of? What makes yeah. Power BI? So uh, the first thing I would draw our attention to is the Power BI desktop. Okay. And so that's something you would install on your computer. That's where you're going to do a lot of report building. Like we just showed you in the, the second answer, you can go through all three steps in your, your, your process for business intelligence there. Uh, and then you have the Power BI service. Yeah. And so the service is really designed for us to uh, engage a lot of our administrative roles, apply role security, schedule refreshing, and most importantly probably is to, to share those reports, share right. those insights with all of your end consumers, right? And then of course, Power BI is, is designed to be completely compatible with the mobile Got sure. mobile apps. It'll run on Windows. It'll Windows phones, but it'll run on. <laughs> it'll run on your. Two people your got iOS. really excited when you yeah, said that. Yeah, <laughs> Windows, or Android, all your different systems, and then there is Power BI for developers. So yeah. there's uh, API capability there. You can use embedded. You can really build it out extensively on the uh, on the other side, on the development side. Yeah. And I would mention that there are on and this is for excuse me. There are on premises. Uh, differentiations too. If you're using yeah. on-premises sources, then you're going to probably want a gateway, your data gateway connected, sure. and then your reporting is going to be a little bit different. So, excuse me. Yeah, that's great. So, in in some cases, if it's a great answer, uh, in some cases, if you were doing uh, this interview question, you might have questions back to the interviewer as well. Yeah. You might say, 
well, where's your data at? So you, you yeah, brought up a great point. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, exactly. You brought up a great point of you might need the data gateway, so you might respond back and say, and it's always great to ask questions back to your interview and, and, and interviews. But so you'd say, what kind of data do you have? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I'd say, hey, I got a little mixture of data here yeah. and there, and then you perfect, bring, you, hey, you're probably going to use something like the data gateway to handle stuff like okay, that. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. All right, so let's, d- again, break the fourth wall here for All a minute, right. and let's dig into this a little deeper. We got a slide here we can talk about this with, so Ooh. let's take a look. So you touched on every one of these components. Mm -hmm. The big one, obviously, the Power BI desktop. Folks are going to spend the majority of their time using the Power BI desktop if they're developers, of course. Then you mentioned, of course, once they finish with the Power BI desktop, they'll publish off to the Power BI service. Mm -hmm. And now what would they do if they're not a cloud user? So let's say they're not using the cloud. Yeah, so they would use the Power BI report server. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's for the on-premises option basically yeah so you, if, if you weren't if your company that you were interviewing for the other question you might ask them is hey are you guys using the cloud if, if they yeah. are using the cloud then yeah they're prob- probably using the power bi report server uh they might i'm uh, sorry they might be using the power bi service if they're using the cloud if they're not using the cloud then it's likely they're using the power bi report server and some companies actually have a mixture of both where they have some mm-hmm. data they feel is feel is sensitive and don't want to put in the cloud mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, in absolutely. that case they would use the power bi report server and then if they felt like they had more aggregate data that they could roll up and share across the cloud, they might use the Power BI service. So you do see some companies that actually use both. And it's worth noting that there are desktop versions are different for on-premises or not. That's Slightly, but they are point. different. Yeah. That's a great point. And then and if you were digging deeper into a company that was not using the cloud, you might ask, okay, well, which version of the Power BI report server yeah. are you using? Because they do update it, but it's not as frequently as updated mm-hmm. as the Power BI services. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you touched on the mobile application, so that's great. The, like I said, the two people that have a Windows phone are really excited about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, obviously, once you deploy to the Power BI service, those uh, reports and dashboards that you design are mm-hmm. visible on your phone. And then you perfect, you touched on as well the uh, Power BI uh, for developers. So being able to embed your applications Mm -hmm. with Power BI embedded, and then the API you have available to be able to tap into some of the resources there as well. So Mm -hmm. great, great answer. Good review there. Let's uh, go to our next question. So let's talk next about resources that are needed for folks that are actually going to be doing development. So let's let's say that uh, I'm really hiring you to be an influencer of Power BI Mm -hmm. within my organization. And so I want to know, you know, what kind of resources as far as like the machines, the physical hardware uh-huh. that my users are going to need. And let's say that we're talking about folks that are actually going to be developing here first. And if okay. you want to elaborate beyond that, you're more than welcome to. Yeah. But wh- how should I have or what should my, uh, in, my users that are developing Power mm. BI solutions have as far as hardware? Ram, ram, ram. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just cut right to the chase. If yeah. you're a creator, not a consumer, you're a creator. Uh, you're going to need, we think, probably six to eight gigs of RAM. The more the, more the better, right, um, depending on the data sets you're working with. Yeah. But really it comes down to uh, you're going to want a 64-bit processor and 64-bit operating system mm. in place for you to be able to leverage that desktop capability. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Okay. And so Microsoft recommends a little bit less if you look in their official documentation. Yeah, let's take a look here. I'll bring it up on the slide here. So yeah, tell, they you can see here what they recommend. They say yeah. one gig available, and and it's 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 amazing because Power BI uses um, a compression engine. It hyper compresses it, so you do need significantly less RAM than you would. You might think you would. Yeah. You might think you would, <clears throat> yeah. but you're you're still gonna want to have that robust element if you're, yeah. you're pulling it out. I think. So this this is from Microsoft documentation. We pulled right. it straight from their documentation. Now, like you said, you said we recommend something different. So let's talk we through do. what do we recommend here. So. With our recommendations, we say that uh, six to eight gigs of RAM is kind of acceptable. You can get mm-hmm. away with that. The more, the better. You start. Yeah, you started your answer with RAM, <laughs> RAM, RAM. I think that's a great way yeah, to it's... to do that. Um, but six to eight gigs of RAM, you can probably get away with. Mm-hmm. Uh, more you can get, the better. Uh, so just if if you ever get asked, hey, do you want a machine upgrade and get some more RAM? The do answer it. is always yes. <laughs> um, the other thing that you mentioned, I want to make sure we touch on as well, yeah. is the the CPU. Yeah. So important. you mentioned that it's important to get a 64-bit operating system. Yeah. Uh, and actually, take a step back from that. It's important to have a 64-bit CPU. Uh, most machines, if you have a laptop that was created in the last 10 years, is probably already a, a 64-bit CPU. The, the, the problem that happens sometimes is Help Desk or whoever does the, the desktop support that mm-hmm. actually sets up and images your machines, sometimes they'll put 32-bit operating systems mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. your machine. Uh, and the reason for that is because they might have different plugins that are used, or maybe mm-hmm. they think you might need this plugin that the company uses, and it only works on 32-bit. 
um, you hopefully can get a 64-bit operating system. So um, we already said everyone's probably has a 64-bit CPU. You want to ensure that you also have a 64-bit operating system, so 64-bit Windows, uh, because otherwise, if you don't, even if you have 16 gigs of RAM yeah. and you're on a 32-bit operating system, it's only going to use 4 gigs of RAM. Yeah. So regardless of what you have in the machine, it's only going to use up to 4 gigs if That's you're on 32-bit. Point. So it can be a pretty limiting factor if you mm -hmm. are on 32-bit. On so yep. definitely something to, to look for. Uh, you can certainly check that on your machine to verify what you have as well. All right. Great one. Let's go to All the right. last question. All right. Good deal. Let's uh, move on to the last question I All have right. for you. So we talked about kind of physical hardware that my mm -hmm. user should have. Uh, what about software? So what kind of software yeah. do they need to have installed on their machine to get going with Power BI? Is there a lot? Kind of walk me through that. Yeah, absolutely. So to get started, you would want to download that Power BI desktop. If you're a power user, you're a creator, yeah. get that desktop. Uh, make sure your machine can handle it, which it should be able to, yeah. and, and get that desktop, and you will be well on your way to getting started. If you're just a consumer, you need browser access. So right. just to get to that service and be able to view the reports, um, administratively, I think you may be considering, are we on-premises, not? You may have some additional things to set up, your data gateway, sure, yeah. uh, Power BI report server, yeah. that type of thing. But really, your desktop, get your, your accounts created in the service, and then go from there. You're, you're pretty close to ready. It's a pretty simple setup. That's a great answer. So if you're interviewing, definitely, like you said, engage yeah. and ask about, do you need the data gateway? Yeah. Where's your data stored at? So definitely some things like that, uh, you know, data gateway is something you may need to have installed. So if you're asked that, be prepared to have those mm -hmm. answers. So let's mm -hmm. let's show this on screen here as well. We'll All kind right. of do a little picture in picture here. So you, you touched on a lot of these items, Power BI mm -hmm. desktop, Clearly, if you're going to have people developing Power BI solutions, <laughs> pretty important uh, that that'll be one of the easiest ways to be able to connect yeah. to and get data in to be able to build reports and uh, manipulate the data and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So you mm -hmm. touched on that perfectly. Um, end users may not necessarily need the Power BI desktop, like you no. said. Uh, so if Maybe they're not. just going to be viewing results mm -hmm. and not actually building solutions, then right. they need a web browser and be able to have a login yeah. to PowerBI.com, the Power yeah. BI service. Or if they're using the Power BI report server, mm -hmm. a log into that, which also right. still needs a web browser. Um, you touched on the administrator capabilities as well. So we talked about this a little bit before mm -hmm. we were prepping for this. Uh, in some cases, uh, who runs the administrative capabilities of your yeah. company may vary. It may be you have a developer that's mm -hmm. actually doing the administration right. uh, for Power BI, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, or it might be a DBA or mm -hmm. an Office 365 administrator that's picked up some of the Power mm -hmm. BI uh, capabilities for administration. Things really vary because Power BI is still a pretty new tool. A lot of people mm -hmm. are feeling out who runs yeah. that part of the business. Yeah, we were talking about that roles being a bit flexible as this technology is emerging, as this movement of citizen developers. Yeah. You know, you may have the personality and the chops to be the administrator yeah. or at least the, the positioning to do it. So yeah, absolutely. It may be your, your part of the interview in needing to know some of that administrative stuff. But Yeah, you might be getting set up to be that administrator. Be the yeah. administrator is being interviewed. Yeah, you don't even know it. Absolutely. So you also touched on uh, whether your data is on premises or in the cloud. Yeah, you talked about important. the data gateway. So we have that here as well. And then finally, another install would be, if your company's not using Power BI in the cloud, right. would be that Power BI report server. So Absolutely. if you're doing on-premises Power BI, you'll mm -hmm. need to make sure you have that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Great answer. I All appreciate right, cool. it. Well, thanks for interviewing me. I yeah. hope you hire me. <laughs> yeah, let's do a quick wrap up here and then Absolutely. we'll uh, and be done for this one. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us for this first edition of our Power BI interview questions. Erin, thank you for interviewing with me. Thank you. <laughs> I think the, these first five questions you did great. I might ask you some more questions in our next one to make sure you, you get should. the job. Yeah, I think you should. You did a great job, though. <laughs> Um, so look for more of these videos to come out. As mm -hmm. always, we'll, you'll see these on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, you can subscribe, obviously, if you subscribe to our Pragmatic Works channel. Yep. And uh, comment <laughs> below. We'd like to know what are some things that you want to know more in-depth questions about? Mm -hmm. What are some things like uh, maybe DAX? We talked mm -hmm. about DAX briefly. Um, yeah. What are some things that you think we should also talk through would be great interview questions absolutely. and then also answers to uh, don't go along yeah, with them as absolutely. well? absolutely. Or maybe you've been asked a, an interview question that you're like, ooh, I didn't know how to answer that. I so like, that. like bring that up. Yeah, yeah that's great. Also, of course, make sure you hit the notification to make sure you get notified whenever we have new videos. And again, thanks, Aaron, for thank joining you. me. And thank you for having me as well. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you on our next video. Thanks a lot. Take care.